Hi everyone, let's cover the basics of accounting. The first thing I need to cover are the actual terms. Assets, as you saw in the previous video, is something of value that we own. So cash is something of value that we own. Equipment, something of value that we own. Equipment can be a simple table, like if we provide a tutoring business, it can be a... This board right now is an equipment. Okay, buildings, something of value that we own. Investment, if we invest in some other company, and inventory, for example, the gas station buys chewing gums in order to sell them, that's called inventory, but later for that lesson. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next items are liabilities. We have accounts payable. This is something that we owe to someone. I didn't discuss accounts receivable before, did I? Accounts receivable is something of value that we own. Actually, somebody owes us money, so we have claim against their asset. That means they owe us, so this is an asset, something of value that we own. But accounts payable, we owe somebody else. Therefore, we have a liability. Or they have claim against our asset. Notes payable is practically the same thing, probably long term rather than short term. Let's go to the next one. Next one is stockholder's equity, and this is a little bit more complicated. Stockholder's equity means what the owners claim against the company's assets. So in our case, we have common stock. Those are the stocks, the ownership that the company issues, who owns the company, and retain earnings. Those are the two sections that we have in the stockholder's equity. Retain earnings is really revenues, minus expenses, minus dividends. Revenues are items for which we provide service. So for example, if I own a tutoring business and I provide tutoring services, I earn revenue. If I pay rent for the camera that I'm using and I'm taping right now, I'm pay paying an expense, I'm incurring an expense. The rent I have, also an expense. The insurance I'm paying, also an expense. I can earn revenue from providing services. Maybe I can sell products. Those are revenues too. Or maybe I can earn interest on the money I have put in my savings account. That's called interest revenue. Finally, dividends is what the company pays to its owners. Distribution of wealth. So if the company has enough cash, they will give dividends to the owners. Okay, let's do some examples. The examples will include the accounting equation. We will analyze transactions. So assets equals liabilities plus stockholders equity. We have the asset account, cash, accounts receivable, furniture, and equipment. We have notes payable. From the equity, we have the common stock, the revenues, minus expenses. Okay, so let's do some examples. When we do these examples, we do this from the paradigm, from the perspective of the company. The first example says that the owner invested $3,000 cash and $15,000 furniture in exchange for common stock. Therefore, the cash increased for $15,000 Actually, that's my mistake. He invested 3000 cash. So he invested $3,000 in cash and $15,000 in furniture in exchange for common stock. So how much stock did he get in return for this? Well, this is the equal sign here. The equation always has to balance. If on the left side we have uh, 18,000 total increase, that means the common stock must have increased for 18,000. Let's go to the next one. Now, the company in the second transaction actually bought furniture worth of $600. So that means we got furniture 600. How did we get the furniture? We paid cash. Therefore, cash decreased. $600. 
on the left side of the equation, we decreased 600 and we added 600, therefore the equation still balances the most important part. In the next transaction, the company actually paid $500 for the rent space. So that means we paid $500, the cash decreased. And look at this, rent is really rent expense. Therefore, minus 500 here from the stockholder's equity. As you can see, the equation balances. Next transaction, the company purchased equipment of $1,200. So, equipment, $1,200. But the company did not pay cash. The company actually signed a loan for it. So, we increased the notes payable for $1,200. So, you see, both sides of the equation balance. Let's go to the next one. Next transaction says that we have actually provided services for $825. We provided the service, we received the cash. When we provide a service, what is that? It is called revenue. We are earning revenue. Keep in mind again the equation, the equation balances. In the net, next transaction, we also provided services, but now instead of receiving cash, they told us, you know what, we, we, we'll pay you later. Things happen like that. People not always have the money to pay, so you will extend them credit. We know that you provided the service for $100. We know that much. Now, did they pay you? No. But they owe you, which is accounts receivable. Let's go to the next one. Next transaction tells us that, you remember that customer that said that couldn't pay us but will pay us later? Guess what? The check arrived in the mail and they paid the $100. So I know I received the cash, which is $100. But what else is affected? I know I have to have at least two accounts affected in accounting. That's the double entry accounting system. I know I received cash. I know that I added 100 here before, you remember that one, that this customer owes me? So that means, if he paid me, he doesn't owe me anymore, so why don't I subtract this 100? Now, the equation balances. Okay, in this company we also hired an assistant and we paid them $125. So I know I paid cash, $125. And I know this is a salary or wages expense. That is right here, 125. I hope I'm keeping the alignment. Probably not. The next one, we provided services for $930. What does that do? Those are revenues, $930. And we received cash, $930. Let's go to the next transaction. You remember that loan that we took to buy that equipment? Well, guess what? Now we have to pay it back. But not all of it. We only pay $400. We paid cash, $400. Do we still owe them $1,200? No. We owe them $400 less. That's what we paid. And the final transaction, I believe, is we pay dividends. I forgot to write dividends over here. So let me just modify this. And instead of expenses, both dividends and expenses need to be here. As you can see, I didn't have space on my table. So let's just add dividends. If we paid $900 cash dividends, then we paid the cash, 900, and then dividends, 900. Equation balances. The key concept here is that at least two accounts will be affected with every accounting transaction. And the equation will always 
always balanced. If it doesn't, there is something wrong. Thank you for watching.